Hello guys, it's another new one. Thank you for your eyeballs. Thank you for your support. My name is Joseph. I talk about politics. I talk about economy, finance, and development as far as our country is concerned. And the way you can be of help to me is that subscribe, kindly subscribe to my channel so that at least you can be the first one to be notified when I upload a new video. Comment down below. Tell me what you think as far as the election is concerned, the development and the economy. Uh -huh. And also like this video, give me a thumbs up so that at least you can sail together in this episode. So today's episode, I'm going to focus on what happened yesterday. Kiro guy from the Rutos camp decamped the Kenya Kwanza to join the Azimio La Moja. All right. So I'm going to focus on that and ask you a question. Do you think Kiro brought something to the Azimio La Moja as far as the votes is concerned? Do you think the guy has the capability to bring votes or to lure votes from the Rift Valley, where the you know William Ruto enjoys the larger percentage of followers. What do you think about that? So, I'm gonna ask, um, you know, based on my analysis, I'm gonna tell you what I think the guy did when it comes to decamping the Uda or decamping what we call the Kenya Kwanza. So, what you are supposed to understand is that this guy was very essential, strategic, and a person to reckon with as far as the, the Kenya Kwanza is concerned. But he decided to decamp the Kenya Kwanza and join the Azimio. But my question is this, does he bring any votes? So the big answer is no. He doesn't bring anything to the Azimio La Umoja as far as the vote is concerned. But he brought something that is very essential and important in politics. That is what we call the perception. Perception is the most essential thing when it comes to politics. You know why? You know, people say that justice must not only be done, but must be seen to be done. And the same case applies when it comes to politics. You have to make it look like, oh, people are running away from your, you know, from your fellas to your camp. That means your camp is more preferable, right? That creates perception. That creates debate. That creates sort of an illusion that, oh, I think that the other guys are winning and myself, I'm losing. Whether the guy was, was bought out, I do not know. Whether he decamped the Kenya Kwanza based on his own objectives and his own suggestion, I do not understand, but hey, all in all, he decamped the Kenya Kwanza to join the Azimio. But he doesn't bring the votes, but what he brings on board is that he brings the perception. People can be able to perceive and view or see things are running hot on the other side, and this side is actually what we can call, you know, a safer side when it comes to politics of this current situation that we are. Number two, we're going to check on who is losing the ground and who is winning the ground. I always say this, like almost every time. The question is this, what Raila Odinga needs in this election, he doesn't need to have or win all the votes from the Mount Kenya. He doesn't need that, that's for sure. I mean, after all, he always win a bigger percentage that only needs a very little top up so that he can carry the day. But who has or who has the highest or rather what he needs to win a lot from the Mount Kenya is Ruto. Ruto needs to win at least 85% or more from the larger Mount Kenya votes for him to be relevant politically as far as the presidential campaign is concerned. And he knows very well. But things are running hot when it comes to uh, the, 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 the selection of the deputy president. Remember what I always say. I said that the choice of Rigade Gashagwa as the running mate for Ruto you know, that must have rubbed shoulders with a lot of people in the Kenya Kwanza campaign. It is known out there that a lot of people in Kenya Kwanza were not preferring Rigathe Gashagwa as the running mate of deputy president. But unfortunately, based on, her, on his financial muscle, based on his capacity to, to mobilize the people in the... But what made him decamp from the Kenya Kwanza uh, the, 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 the group? He said that the reason as to why he did that is because of the Rigathe Gashagwa. And what does that tell you? I always talk about that in this channel, that choice of Rigathe Gashago as the running mate of Ruto, it's actually or was actually the bad idea. You know why? Large number of people in Kenya Kwanza were not for the Rigathe Gashago. They were for Kithure Chidichi. Because it was predictable that Ray Lodinga was to name Mother Karua as his running mate. And the only person who can compete with Mother Karua ethically was Kithure Chindiki. But you cannot. You cannot field Karua and Rigathe Gashagwa and make them compete because it's like heaven on earth. Or rather, it's like heaven and earth. So the choice of Rigathe Gashagwa as the running mate of Ruto was actually the worst idea that ever happened in Kenya 
kwanza. And that's why you see all these commotions, a lot of people are having showed us some, you know, some un un unconfirmed news or information says that actually the Rigathe Gashagwa sort of threatened the, 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 the DP and told him like, hey, you know what, if you do not select me or someone from my area is that, hey, forget about this thing, my friend. I mean, we're we going to not give you votes. So, you know, when, when, you, when you are pegged on that such a situation, you have no option but going for that option, all right? Number two, Rigathe Gashagwa, the reason why he was selected is that this guy has financial muscle, all right? Number two, he has the capability of mobilizing people, you know, from the ground there. He, he, he knows how to, to work down there and actually bring the numbers to uh, Ruto. But you see what's happening now. Things are actually folding on themselves little by little. That's why you see that the, the Kirwa decamped from the Kenya Kwanza to join the other side because he sees that things are not going okay as far as our camp is concerned. He never brought votes. Yeah, I agree. But what he brought is the perception. And perception is very, very important. Or the public figure out there is very, very important when it comes to politics. That's what you're supposed to understand. So what's happening right now is that things are running hot in the Kenya Kwanza camp, but they're trying to make it look like everything is okay and everything is normal. So another question is this. So who is winning the ground and who is who is losing the ground? What you're supposed to understand, we have a very nice lady here who everyone is trying to compete and get something out of her. And that is the larger Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya votes, it's, it's, Mount Kenya votes is one of the most essential and determining figure when it comes to this election. And that means whoever wins the Mount Kenya then carries the day. But on condition, who needs what? Based on the question of who needs what, that, that, that actually answers the question. Who needs to win how much so that he can carry the day? From my analysis, and I always talk about this, Ruto needs at least 85% to be declared the winner as far as this election is concerned. But what does that tell you? Getting 85% for him this time round from Mount Kenya, it would be it will be one of the hardest thing that he can ever imagine of getting as far as this election is concerned. You know why I'm saying so? Because right now things are running hot. The choice of Mother Karu as the running mate of Raila, that was actually a hit on Deputy Ruto or Deputy William Ruto's camp. You know why? Karu, this guy, this kind of an individual who you try to look for something that to attach how with, but you actually don't have anything. Remember, he's a reformist. He was, you know, he was seconded by the, the, the civil society of Kenya. And those are the people who you always find them, you know, criticizing almost the government of the day. But they support, but they support, they supported Karua for the, the, the deputy president slot. You know, what does that tell you? Okay, they are not number, there are not a large number of them in our country, but they created perception that, hey guys, you know what, we've been fighting the government of the day like almost every time. But guess what? This time around, we have somebody who we can support. And that really creates a very good perception when it comes to the elites of this country. Remember, there are people in this country who are very elite and they don't just make decisions based on the larger population of what they do. And sometimes they even wait to see what the civil society says uh, on the integrity of the specific individual whom they suggest to them that is appropriate as far as the civil society is concerned. So what I would say is that yeah, the perception is there, the ground is there, and what I would advise if I was with, you know, as a neon La Umoja thing, or if I was with uh, the, 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 the Raila, I would say like, hey guy, you know what, hit the ground and keep on running because this is the best time that this guy can, this is the best time than ever this guy can be able to cling to power and actually get what he has been aspiring to get as far as the election of this country is concerned. That is my simple analysis, and that one I would say that it's a matter of it's a game of wait and see on August 9th of this year, so that we can be able to know exactly who carries the day and who gonna be our next president. Hey guys, you know what? Subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment down below, tell me what you think, and see you in the next one.